So this is devlog 2. Devlog 2 of I don't know how many because I have done a lot of this on the side beforehand and realised I'm making the most RPG maker game I can make. I'm making an RPG. And that is because when I looked at the engine, the first thing I thought was, I've got this idea. I designed a epic fantasy world story thing because everybody needs to build their fantasy world at some point. Like this is university, so like 19 and I did this whole, I'm building a world. So what happened in the past of this world? Let's do plate tectonics, then with fantasy races, then them branching out, seeing how they would intermingle, how they would change, how they would split. Then I came up with the Amazons. So I was like, ooh, that's a way that I can flip the elves on their side because what are we always inspired by when we think of epic world building and a fantasy? Tolkien. And then ancient Greek myths and legends, other myths and legends. Oh, you know what should be in every world building? Things like species development, like Neanderthals versus the Homo sapiens. That's why I've put the dwarves versus the elves. Thinking about how humanoid species are intermingling. And since we've got so many fantasy races across so many fantasy platforms, what happens next? This is a world of what happens next in my mind and then i needed an actual epic fantasy plot for this to actually work as a novel idea and then a game idea so it kind of went full circle and then tried to put stereotypes on the head went back to putting the stereotypes back in it's a bit of a cluster mess so i have just realized that i didn't do the first thing you do in rpgs a cutscene so I've written a cutscene, I've planned it out, storyboarded it, as you would a story to be filmed. That's where I've done a little bit too much filming. That means that I just go for straight for the, this is how you would make it as a film, and this is how you would make it as a linear story that is like in a novel. But to gamify that, to make it interactive, that's what I'm learning. So take an idea I've already plotted out. Look at this really extensive list of all the plot points that you're supposed to hit that is not the best idea for a first game so i've just made and just thought about cutscene to also make it quite a short game like a short little rpg that i can then figure out how to do my art and my sprites and make it just look cool and kind of fun and kind of tiny epic like it's an epic world and there is definitely something going down but first level is just like character she got main goals you either do it with her or you screw her over and get caught. There are so many game overs in this. Basically, I like people to think about keeping their main characters alive because otherwise you're not really following a story. Boop. If you can read my scroll, this is how I storyboarded, yep, inverted commas in there, my opening cutscene. We've got darkness, then there is a light lit under the mother statue. Then another two candles are lit. You see more of the mother statue. Then three sisters are shown. Then the queen's hood falls off. See, I'd animate this properly, except it's RPG Maker and I can kind of do a tiny pew. And then we have, I'm getting older, my daughters. One day, one of you will have to take over and rule the kingdom. Super, like, this sounds House of Dragon. I will need to work on this dialogue so much. But then we go on to, now may the mother wish you well. I've got a goddess that's to do with the creation story of this whole place that people are gonna keep on referencing. Great, world building, hopefully it'll work. And then the goddess's eyes glow. When panning this, I didn't realise that I was subconsciously thinking about the glowing eye statue in the RPG Maker sprites. It was going to be more that one of the eyes glowed and turned into the world and then the other went like really deep and dark and then had spirally like spindrally like tentacles oozing out. So if I wanted to uh animate that i could but i'm not going to yet rpg maker saves my ass again so being quite new to rpg maker i'm gonna also look at what other people are doing in rpg maker games and rpgs and try not to think like this is an open sandbox world like i was putting my D, &D lot in because that means that they ignore 
the plot that I've given them. So there needs to be lots of like doom scales. If you've ever heard of the TTRPG Shiver, that's got a literal doom scale at the top. And I was thinking about that and maybe taking a little bit of inspiration from Call of Cthulhu as something like, something dramatic is going to happen. Whether the player or players are thinking about it or not, you could play this game super cozy, but then you will be surprised when the world ends. I love some cosy games, like, but cosy games where you will probably die are also amazing. <laughs> like, say, don't starve. Cue me dying. And back to my game. So my main goal now is to make that short, well, ending that matches this cutscene, now that I've done the cutscene. Oh, I need to do another cutscene, as well as the way to make you die if you fail. So this has mother trying and saying you've got all of these responsibilities, your characters trying to run away from the responsibilities, and then like if mother finds you still wandering about, chuffing along, doing your thing, instead of actually running away, you've got to own up and face the responsibilities. Small scope, as we're all told to do for our first game, but always forget. I'm gonna try and remember, and remind myself, and remind you guys, any other budding game devs. And I realise I can talk about world building till Kingdom Come, so let me know if you want to talk more about and discuss world building, because you know what? The big bad secret, there's no such thing as a new idea. Just ways you bring it out and you portray it, and how you do it. That's down to your creativity. So let's continue to be creative and join this little community of creative people by being a subscriber. See you soon.